check it out, check it out. Man, it feels good. Hell yeah. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be installing factory RDX injectors along with the VMS racing adapters into my D16 Y8. Because the RDXs come with a turbo K series which need a lot of injector. These flow 440cc compared to the stock 240cc. And um... I believe they have eight holes which should atomize fuel really good all we need but there's one catch they're a lot shorter than the d-series injector so to make it work you need a spacer which extends the length but also adapts it to fit in the fuel rail and along with that it came with pigtails to adapt it from the rdx plug to the d-series plug now, I haven't actually tried it, but I my plugs do look a little different. I need to try it for myself and see if this actually works. But I guess I could try and pop on the adapter and see how that looks. I've seen videos of people having issues with this, where this little ear gets in the way. And all they do is cut or grind or do whatever you got to do to get this little ear off so that this adapter can sit flush on this bottom ring right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to cut off these little ears get all these spacers sitting nice and flush and then we'll go for the install all right i got all the injectors cut and all the adapters uh sitting flush they don't go all the way down they kind of bottoms out in the base of the adapter so as long as they look like that, it should be fine. Real quick, I'm going to show you the injector duty cycles. Uh, like right now, it's 7 or 8 pounds where I'm at now. It's 7,000 RPM. It's 97 to 104% duty cycle, which is you know, basically maxing out the injectors. But once I do these RDX injectors, which are 440cc, I can go ahead and do the fuel multiplier. So it's going to go from 100% basically down to 58, 62% duty cycle. I can max out the Honda map sensor at 11 PSI and still be basically chilling at like 66% duty cycle. So that's why I just think this is a good, um, good budget upgrade. I mean, it was only like 100 bucks for everything I needed. And honestly, it should support at least... I'd imagine like 16 pounds, if not a little more. So we'll see how far I can get with these. All right, so here they are installed. Unfortunately, I had to hardwire them because those uh, adapters were not the right one for these. It might have been for OBD1, like I had uh, assumed earlier, not OBD2. So I went ahead and just, I wanted it running and done now. So I just, I wired it in myself. So basically, now if I ever want to change out injectors, I got to run K-Series injectors, but uh, whatever. <laughs> I don't recommend it, but it's what I did. But they're all good. I did have an issue with the rolled um, O-ring on this one. I had to take it off and reinstall it a couple times because the, the O-ring kept getting like pinch and rolling. But I finally got it right, and I it's not clocked right. The VMS logo isn't facing out looking the rest of them so that's a little annoying i'm gonna have to fix that it's a pretty easy and straightforward swap if you're gonna do this just make sure make sure you get the right wires for your setup you know if you got the obd2 obd1 or whatever the hell just make sure you got the right setup because i got the wrong ones uh like an idiot so this morning i'm gonna do a little bit of tuning on the, on the honda but uh i got a little side job i gotta do a wheel speed sensor on a chevy avalanche <laughs> Friend of my brother's. We'll take care of that and then fine tune those uh, injectors I put in yesterday. Yeah, just give me a quick pull. Do some cool shit for the for the channel. Yeah, I kind of went to a high gear. What was that? Third. So the main two issues 
this guy wanted me to take care of was an ABS light and a check engine light. Um, ABS light should pop up here in a second. Hmm. Maybe not. But it did have ABS fault because I scanned it. And it gave me a specific issue here. Right rear uh, wheel speed sensor circuit failure. Basically what happens is the wheel speed sensors go out. And if you don't know what that is, all it is is this little sensor that goes... Uh, sometimes like into the hub or to the axle, uh, basically there's like a magnetic wheel sometimes in the bearing or sometimes there's even like a reluctor wheel, something like that. And it detects each individual wheel speed on all the corners off, you know, front left, right, rear left, rear right. Uh, and basically it's kind of like the heart of your ABS system. So like if, if it detects one wheel spinning faster than the rest, it knows that maybe that one broke traction. Like if it was in the rear in this case and uh, you know, just help compensate the ABS and the stability track. And also there's like a yaw, yaw sensor. There's a steering angle sensor that detects if like, you you know, you're losing control to your steering wheels this way, but you're going one direction. And basically, yeah, this, one of these going out can basically disable the entire ABS system, the stability track, uh, all kinds of crap can be disabled just because you have one stupid sensor that went out. So I went ahead and replaced that ABS sensor. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear it out. Race codes. Now I'm just trying to give you some information that can help. This isn't just uh, this vehicle specific. It, this applies to a lot of crap. Um, okay. No fault codes detected. So what I can do now, just to make sure that it's like 100% fixed, is... Um, Go for a little cruise and it, uh, it should register the mile per hour is per wheel like right here it's me left front right front left rear and this was actually the issue right here so i'm going to go just around the block and see if it registers and if it does then this thing's fixed all right fixing to start moving let's take a look here and right away they are start registering it wasn't registering before So sweet, this thing is fixed. All right. The boost cut's 11 pounds. I've got the uh, part throttle drivability, like the AFR, kind of back to where it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to make a pull and see, see where it's at. It should be close to being good. Well, let's find out. I'm gonna give it one more little pull just to show you the improvement. I'm gonna try and back up so you can get a look at all the gauges. It's hard, because I have to like hold the phone on the wheel I need to get a mount, so that's what I really need. Mount it to the steering wheel. But check it out, check it out. Man, it feels good. Hell yeah. So without even really tuning in full throttle yet, it's it's really close to being good. But I, I did some pulls and, and washed the AFRs for myself, and they start off good, like 11, 5, but like in the high RPM, high boost, it, it gets as lean as a 12, 2. So I think I'm going to add, I don't know, maybe like, like 10, 15% up top, and it's it's pretty much, uh, it's pretty good. I mean, it's not fucking dialed in, but it's it's good enough to have some, some fun with it. So I think that's going to be it for this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps. And comment below if you have any questions or uh, if you want your video featured, uh, shoot me it on uh, Facebook or Instagram, something like that. I'll feature it on my channel. But thanks for watching, see you next one. I'm gonna neutral slam it. <laughs>